Hi guys, it's Abby from Autumn Fan Art and today I'm going to be recommending some World War II reads. So every year on the 11th of the 11th at 11am we remember the fallen here in the UK. Um, we wear puppies for this and the <laughs> you're supposed to put the leaf in a specific position depending on certain things but with this pin it just kind of... So it's just sitting like that so like I'm sorry but that's where it's sitting. <laughs> um, but yes, so we remember the fallen in all of our wars and all of our battles. This is inclusive of everyone. Um, everyone has their own different opinions of it. Traditionally it is like the people on our side, but in modern days it has also extended to include, for example, when I'm speaking about World War II recommendations, those who fought for the Germans. It's, a, it's an interesting topic of conversation, but for me at least, a lot of those men on both sides, um, on Ally and Axis, were forced into fighting. Um, a lot of the men did not want to fight, these, these were not willing soldiers, it was conscriptions. Um, the conditions on both sides were atrocious, and so I personally choose to remember everybody who fought and who risked their lives and ultimately lost their lives for this war. Um, but it does also include all of the other wars. So it includes World War One, which I need to read more from, which is why this is World War Two recommendations. It also um, includes more modern battles. My dad actually served in the army for 24 years. Um, he is alive and well. He's currently shopping at Tesco's. Uh, <laughs> but yes, so that would include his colleagues and friends who sadly were lost um, out on deployment. And so yes, this is just a time where we think of everybody who we've lost who's been in any form of the forces, not just the army, which is the branch that my dad was in, but also the, uh, the Navy and the Air Force and the Marines and the, the, just everything. Uh, so I, I know that other countries obviously have their own things. Um, I think Europe is pretty November the 11th centric. I don't know about the US and uh, Canada or Australia or any other countries around the world. But I will also say that we are not just remembering English troops or British troops. We had, it was a world war on the Allies side and on Axis side. We had people from all over the world fighting. We had people from Asia and Africa and Australasia and South America and North America as well as Europe fighting in that war and we remember them all so just saying that uh, I will say a lot of these books that I am recommending are quite Europe centric because some of them are from my childhood I am intending on expanding this um, as I age but to get on with what I'm doing today I have five recommendations for World War II books that I believe you should read. So, I am going to start with the fiction books. The least dark, although it is still dark, is Carrie's War by Nina Borden. This is a middle grade book which follows Carrie as she is sent off as an evacuee to the countryside due to the Blitz in London there. And it's um, them living their life in the countryside with the strange and terrible things and Carrie does the worst thing she ever did in her life, which is said on, on the synopsis. And this just really explores childhood and guilt and um, acceptance as well as being about the war. So, book number one. Then we're starting to get a bit darker. Um, so book two is Codename Verity by Elizabeth Vine. Um, there's also, is it up there? No, it's in the garage. There's also the second book, which is Rose Under Fire, which I really liked as well. But this is the first one I read. I got this in America, in a Barnes and Nobles. Um, <laughs> we don't have these floppy paperbacks here in the UK. That is not a thing that our paperbacks do. This is about, um, an American girl who comes across to the UK and is fighting with British troops and she is uh, going as a spy and she gets captured and is being held and interrogated and it's her writing out like notes to herself 
um, as well as like confessing certain things to the Germans whilst trying not to give away too much information and endanger those that she cares about as well as just the general ally population. This is a really hard-hitting book. It's intense. It's really, really intense. It's a young adult book, so uh, a little bit more of an older age range than Carrie's War there. And one that I did cry reading, but I definitely recommend. The last of the younger based books, I'm unsure whether this is YA or middle grade. It does follow a girl who is seven, I believe, but of course that doesn't mean necessarily anything, but it is in the younger bracket. So she is a young Polish girl who is escaping from the Nazis and is with the Swallow Man in the woods and they're trying to stay safe and stay out of the way of the Nazis and it is a very interesting quick read on the desperate measures that some people would go to to survive partnering with people that they didn't know, forming these really strong alliances which then were immediately broken up as soon as they were apart from each other because you had to keep yourself alive. This focuses more on uh, mainland Europe's struggles. But, um, so we've, we've got a few different ones here already. We've got evacuees in Britain, which is a, a very, if you're not British, it's a very common topic to learn about and have studied and have read about in fiction and non-fiction here in the UK is the evacuees. Then we have someone who is in the Germans capture um, who is being interrogated and then we have someone who is living in mainland Europe and trying to avoid the Nazis total authoritarian rule. Now these last two books are non-fiction. One of them is incredibly sad and one of them is not. So I'm going to go with the sad one first and then we'll end on a higher note. So these are both non-fiction books and this one is Night by Ellie Wiesel. Now if you are American or from North America, I'm not sure how much Canada reads this book, you're probably thinking why are you recommending this? Everyone knows to read this. Not so much. We don't read this in school in the UK. As far as I can tell from what I've heard from American friends, they tend to have this like assigned to them in English class in school. This is not something we get assigned. Um, this is not something that is kind of m made for everyone to read. It's not one of those things like Of Mice and Men or To Kill a Mockingbird where the entire populace is likely to have read it. Uh, although I've not read Of Mice and Men. Uh, <laughs> I didn't do that in school. But this isn't one of those ones. This is like a normal book where you would go and pick it up yourself. It isn't advised by a school or put onto you by a school. So a lot of British people haven't read this one just because it's less common. <laughs> it doesn't get told about in schools and stuff. This is the memoir of a man who survived the Nazi concentration camp. It is horrendous. There are certain things in here that I had read about in fictional tales and thought that could have been exaggerated, that could have been real that is probably something that could have happened and then I've read about it in here and I'm like oh great great it did happen it actually did happen and this was worse than some of the fictionalized accounts that I read this is very much an adult book I very much recommend people with <laughs> for want of a better word a strong constitution I'm going back to the 1940s here um to read this of course if you believe that you are old enough um that's on your own back feel free to pick it up, but just a warning. This is deep, this is heavy, this is definitively an adult orientated memoir about the horrors that Ellie went through during the camps when he was there. There are some other books in this series that apparently according to um, Alex from Alex Black Reads, she's read some of them and they're fictionalised, so it's like basing it off of real life, but uh, making it into a work of fiction and they apparently aren't as good I guess because they're less impactful because this is true you know this is true but that could also be something to look into there but yes especially for my British my UK audience and this was gifted to me by the lovely Alex from Alex Black Reads um, because she knew that this wasn't something that I'd read and that this wasn't something that, that, had we, that we'd covered in schools and I cried I read it on the 1st of January, I think 2020, if not 2019, I can't remember what year she gave me it, um, and I cried. And then on to the, the happier note, um, so this is another true life memoir, and it is Gun Button to Fire by Tom Neal. So aged only 19, 
throughout the Battle of Britain, which was across like a period of time, it wasn't like one battle. Um, and he shot down 13 enemy aircraft. So that doesn't mean he necessarily killed them, um, parachutes exist. It doesn't mean he killed them, it just means he shot them down. Um, and this is a really in-depth look at his life, um, of him being moved around the UK, of him learning to fly different planes, of the people that he lost, which is, there are sad bits in this, it is a memoir about World War II, um, but also of the friendships that he made, of the impact that he had, and of his family, and it's just really interesting. And then at the end of the, the book there is an epilogue of what happened after the Battle of Britain, and it does focus on like squadrons and uh, individuals, so Sar Sar uh, Charles Palliser, Sergeant John Beard, George Stroud, Alistair Main, these are actual people, and so at the end of the book it says here's what happened to them after the war. So you do also get like that closure as well, which was quite nice. Um, and there are pictures in this book. Some of them are just pictures, some of them are pictures of um, documentation that was used to log the planes. So these are the log lists that they used. Um, you can see the little repurposed swastika for the Nazis there. It's used for when they've shot down one of their planes. And it's just a really interesting look into the life of a pilot at this time and he was quite young as well only 19. So these are five recommendations of books that I think you should read in memoriam of those we've lost. They all follow different topics and different aspects um, as I mentioned slightly earlier this is an evacuee, this is someone being held by the Nazis and being interrogated, this is someone in mainland Europe escaping the Nazis rule, this is someone who sadly did not manage to escape and is in a concentration camp and this is someone fighting flying out every day from Britain and back to fight the aerial fight that was happening at the time. It is very European centric, I am aware of this, there is a lot I want to do um, in expanding that. There is, I'll give you a bonus here, there's two fiction, YA fiction books that I've read, Orphan Monster Spy and Devil Darling Spy. And these are two fictional works based around World War II, written by Matt Killeen. This is about a young, orphaned Jewish girl who looks Aryan and is trying to escape the Nazis hurting her, and then ends up uh, going as a spy into a Nazi girls' boarding school, which is really interesting. And then this book is the second book in the duology, or trilogy, at least for now it's only a duology, um, and they go to Africa. And they go throughout a variety of different countries. It doesn't say specifically, it just says Central Africa at the moment. But this does have a look into more of the global impact of the World War. So that is, it was a good like little starting point to kind of jog my memory that like, I'm reading really white books, maybe expand on that. So yes, even though this is written by a white author. Um, MacLean does actually write feminism incredibly well, um, he writes the female perspective really well, he is an ardent feminist, and as far as I can tell, the way that he wrote this, at least to my white female sensibilities, seemed really well done. Of course I would recommend getting an own voices, I say own voices review, like basically someone black to say whether he wrote this correctly, someone black and from Africa who's read this preferably from Central Africa, because that's where this is set, uh, it goes across multiple countries, and just see if not, just if this was represented correctly. So that's something that I do need to do, and I do need to research, but from this white lady's point of view, I did enjoy that. And it has made me want to look more into the world aspect of World War II, because a lot of what I read about World War II is based in Europe. So... I need to fix that. But these are five books based around Europe that I recommend reading this Remembrance Day. Let me know if you've read any of these uh, down below or if you do have any stories of loved ones that you may have lost, um, whether that is a family member back in history who you lost during any of the battles or someone more recent who has served in any of the forces there. Um, feel free to mention them down below. Thank you so much for watching guys and please be respectful this Remembrance Day. Thank you.